Welcome back. You're listening to Cross Border, our Prophecy Reality Edition. Uh, don't really have a direction, just doing some emails in our second hour, and we're going to jump into uh, biblical, the biblical overthrow of the Petrine theory. Yes, we want to get it from a uh, biblical authority. I think that's the most important one, so you want to stick around for that. Um, Let's see, I found this uh, today because I did a, uh, a segment a month or so ago, I guess. It's been a while, time flies. It is, uh, is the binding of Satan now or future? As you know, the, uh, the official Reformed Church position uh, out there, and to say the Methodists or uh, whoever is the Reformed Church, the, on uh, prophecy is a millennial and that poses several problems especially with Revelation chapter 20 um, where the binding of Satan happens how do they explain that away and uh, because that's something that's supposed to happen when the millennium begins when Christ returns for his thousand year reign uh, we're supposed to have the binding of Satan because we can we don't want Satan loose while Jesus has set up his kingdom on earth, physical millennial reign, and they don't believe in that. They believe that the millennium is symbolic for the time that we're living in now until the second resurrection, which means they have to put the first resurrection back somewhere uh, when people were being born again, perhaps at Pentecost. Or something like that when people receive the Holy Spirit but Paul overthrows that we talked about that you should look up that uh, that post on my website is the binding of Satan now or future and, and another problem well there are other problems with that but we won't get into them all you can check out that video we're not going to rehash everything but I found this comment on our uh, reformed hist historicism group uh, this is from Tulawani uh, just found out something. The binding of Satan, as described in Revelation 20, can't be in the first century. So the so the uh, reformed um, amillennialists they believe also not only has the resurrection, first resurrection always ha already happened. That is, you're resurrected in Christ when you're born again. Um, but. Uh, the binding of Satan. Okay. Oh yeah, the binding of Satan. They they have to place that there at the same time. But we got another good point here. Uh, he says the binding of Satan, as described in Revelation 20, can't be in the first century. He says why? Because it is synonymous with the destruction of Babylon the Great in chapter 18:23, and that's a very good point because he says there the word. They're translated deceive because, you know, let's go there. I'm, I'm going to open up my e-sword. We're going to go to 18, uh, Revelation 18.23. And we're going to take a look at that. Revelation 18.23. And uh, let me open up my plus version here. And we'll even get this on the screen. How about that? Okay, so here we have it here, 18.23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And this is the destruction of mystery Babylon the Great. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Oh boy, that's, I could comment on that statement there. For by thy sorceries were all the nations deceived. So if all the nations are being deceived by mystery Babylon now, and this happens before Christ returns, obviously, they, they probably won't argue with that one, the destruction of mystery Babylon. The reformed amillennials, they actually do believe that mystery Babylon represents the Vatican and uh, the Catholic, you know, that, that nation, the Vatican over there, um, is a representation of that great church. Yeah, the great whore church. Okay? So many of them do believe that. It says So we have the destruction of Mystery Babylon, and it says, For by thy 
sorceries were all the nations deceived. Okay, so we jump back over to chapter 20, and it says, laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and put him in the bottomless pit, and shut it, set a seal upon it, so that he could deceive, deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years be fulfilled. So if Satan is deceiving the nations, through Mystery Babylon, because, of course, he is the key acting agent in Mystery Babylon, and he's deceiving the nations now and before Christ returns, and that is between, say, uh, Pentecost, when Satan was supposedly bound by the amillennials, and they were, that was the first resurrect, the first amillennial resurrection. Well, they got a problem here. This is one more problem with a millennialism. So if I ever do that show again, we're going to throw this one in there. And the stuff, it, it, it'll just keep popping up. But you see, that's the same word and the same phrase there is that deceive the nations, right? All right, anyway, you get the idea, but it's the same word there and the same phrase, deceiving the nations. So if it's going on now, how could Satan have been bound at Pentecost when the amillennial first resurrection happened in the binding of Satan? They tried to explain it away, but it just doesn't work. Yeah, watch that. Uh, go back if you missed that broadcast, and it's there. You just have to put in there, is the binding of Satan now? And according to the amillennials, he is bound now because he supposedly was bound back there when their first symbolic resurrection happened and like being born again at Pentecost or whatever. Um, it doesn't quite add up and it, we keep finding more things that don't quite work with the amillennial thought on eschatology. Problematic, yes indeed. So, and that was 1823 you want to look for that again. So compare 18, uh, chapter 1823 with uh, chapter 20, verse 3, and uh, the deceiving the nations thing, which was not supposed to be happen when Satan bound. Unfortunately, the scripture reveals that that is going on, and it has to, Mystery Babylon is in between that period somewhere. At least they have to admit that. Okay between Pentecost or whenever they say the bound binding happened and the return of Christ, which obviously hasn't happened yet. <laughs> okay, so is the binding of Satan now or future? There it is. Okay, what's next on our agenda here? Any questions or comments in the chat room? Anyone want to call in on the phone line? Um, uh, do it now. We've got 15... Uh, 10 or 15 minutes left here of the broadcast uh, before we go into the next hour, well, before we take a break for the next hour, and then we're going to talk about the Petrine theory. And if you've been listening to Tom Fress on First Amendment Radio, uh, he's at, you know, kind of covering the same thing right now. So um, just going through it myself and re-editing and, 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 uh, and, uh, publishing our uh, reformed, our Reformation Quincentennial edition uh, makes me realize that people actually do believe this. A lot of people do believe in the Petrine Doctrine. And most Catholics believe it. They believe it without question. Kind of like futurists believe the rapture without question. You know, uh, They just accept it. But uh, I think, I think um, that for Roman Catholics, Yes, I, I was born a Catholic, yeah, so, uh, and I would have accepted anything if I paid any attention to it at all, probably. And then when I became a, uh, a, well, I guess a nominal Protestant evangelical Christian at about 19 years old, because I didn't realize and make any distinction between Catholics and Protestants myself, but I knew that as many times as I sat in a Catholic church, that it held no interest for me whatsoever. <clears throat> and everything just went whew, over my head. I mean, it didn't even go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> but nothing. It just, it all went by me. Praise God, right? And uh, I didn't get, you know, 
uh, hooked up in, uh, or beguiled or whatever, or take any of it serious at any time. So I was a Catholic in, by birth only and in name only, but never in my heart or mind or anything was I anything Catholic at all, unless that's what Catholics are. And I think that's what most of them are. They're just, you know, uh, they think that they're okay if they go to the priest and and do confession. I don't even know if I did that. Did they make me do confession? They might have done that once in a while to me. I don't know. I can't remember anything about it. So, because I did actually attend Catholic schools and went to the Catholic school chapel, and it was all uh, kind of required. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. I know what I'm talking about, but I think the Word of God is has a powerful influence even on Catholics that they go, "Well, oh, that's in the Bible," because something you know, uh, especially if they're elect and they don't know it, and God wants to call them out. The the Word of God is what's going to call them out, not me, not you, but uh, it needs to be brought their attention. So if you got any Catholic friends, you might want to, you might want to forward that article to them that I posted on my website there. Let's see, that article is uh, the Roman Catholic Petrine Theory. And post it on your Facebook, send it to, to your Catholic friends, whatever. And if they read the Word of God and it affects them, then fine. And if they're not elect, then it will have no effect on them whatsoever. We're just trying to, you know, we don't know who the elect are, so we're kind of, you know, throwing the seed far and wide, and that's God's plan. No one has any excuse uh, whatsoever uh, for ignoring the Word of God, and the elect will not ignore it at some time that's going to uh, germinate in their hearts and their minds, and uh, it will spring up into life everlasting. And that's our hope and our prayer for everyone we meet and especially our family and our friends and everyone who listens to our broadcast. That's why First Amendment Radio is here and that's why I do what I do every day. Just planting seeds and others maybe have planted and we can do a little watering here. Uh, whatever it takes, whatever, whatever we can do for God's kingdom. And that's what we all should be doing. We're all fellow laborers in His kingdom. And it really starts at home, you know, in your own home with your own family. Get out your Bible, use some of these resources, some of these postings, and some of these books to teach your family, you know, uh, proper biblical Christianity. Because that's what the, the Reformation was about. It was about reintroducing proper biblical Christianity. But men are fallible, you know. They got denominations, some of them. And now you go into the churches and they got all these denominations and they got hierarchy and government in them. And, and it's, you know, sometimes it's good to have structure and, uh, and, uh, authority and accountability. All of those things are good. You know, or they can be good, but they can all be perverted to. And they always are. It's just the nature of, uh, well, it's because we're all fallen men. We all have that fallen nature that we inherited from Adam. We're all walking around with a death sentence, except for the elect. Yes, we, but we still have a, we elect, we have a death sentence that's now on our flesh. And uh, actually, it will be a liberating death when it's death to our mortal flesh. And we are um, changed in the resurrection to our immortal bodies that, that will be like Christ when we see him will we we will be like him and that's another problem with the uh, a millennial theory uh, of, or belief is they have a what they call an intermediate state you can I did a show on the intermediate state uh, that's bunk because when we see Christ we will be like him and they say well when you die now because it hasn't been the second resurrection yet, you go to this intermediate, ethereal, spiritual state. But I guess you don't get to be there with Christ. Christ is not going to be there. You're going to be kind of like in limbo, bodiless, waiting for the second, the, 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 the second resurrection. 
the first ooh how does that work missing a resurrection somewhere since they already had one but you got to wait in this ethereal uh bodiless spiritual state and until the resurrection something or other happens i don't know i've had a lot of problems with that but uh yeah no not going for it because when we you you have to be in this ethereal bodiless uh spiritual state intermediate state until you see christ because you know if if to if to die is to gain and and when i when i die i'm going to be with christ then there was where's the waiting coming in at so if i if i'm going to be like him when i see him i will be like him then i must see him immediately i can't be in an ethereal bodiless spiritual state awaiting a resurrection body it must happen immediately because i will be like him and he is not bodiless ethereal spiritual um you know he is spiritual but he has a glorified body and he showed it to everybody and he hasn't got rid of it yet so when we see him we will be like him yes indeed okay as carrie ann says i think you're right ww oh well if you put down the scripture you can't go wrong because <laughs> he put some scripture in there let's see uh, unless it's something else but anyway uh, no one has ever said oh i get it no one has ever said that before ww yeah i'm sure you've been right at least once in your life uh ww <laughs> and uh i know that ww is actually thomas indeed but i'm sure he's been right at least once in his life and uh you're right because you put down scripture and you can't go wrong with that oh satan sure seems to be running loose now yeah, in agreement uh, absolutely Okay, well, what else do we got? I don't know if I got anything else in my mailbox. Not a whole lot. Uh, stick around for the second hour. As I said, we're going to jump into it. Let's see. W does says, I think before Adam ate the apple, he had that glorified body. And that was as we will be in the resurrection. I'm not sure that it was quite the same body that we will have. In the resurrection I'm not sure about that but it's a thought it's something to think about something to spark the imagination there and and but we'll see I, I but it doesn't say that when we see him we will be like Adam okay it says that we will be like him so I don't want to go back because we will be redeemed and glorified Adam had no need for redemption until he ate the apple but you know what Hey, that's true. Okay, I got it figured out now. When we see him, we will be like Adam. You know why? Because Adam will be there and he will be like Christ. I got it figured out. Good job, WW. Okay, you're listening to Cross the Border, our Prophecy Reality Edition. And I would like you to go to my website, uh, crosstheborder.org. Make sure you subscribe there if you haven't yet. Uh, please do that. Also know that um, I'm just about done. If uh, you're waiting for Volume 3 of the Hori Apocalyptic Day, Volume 3 of the Quincentennial Edition, um, that will be published later. If you're subscribed to my website, uh, perhaps I'll put a notice on. So please go there and subscribe. And I want to thank all of the, the few people that are helping to support First Amendment Radio, Tom's Broadcast, my broadcast, or or supporting us broadcasters individually. Uh, those are different things, too. Some of us are, are individual and need a little support. And some of us, uh, like me, I depend uh, for my sole uh, support on First Amendment Radio support and also whatever anyone wants to give specifically to the Cross the Border broadcast there at my website, crosstheborder.org. Okay, and uh, so make sure you do that. Crosstheborder.org 
And uh, we, like I said, when we get back, we're going to talk about the pet trying theory and what the scripture has to say about that. Okay, well, may the Almighty bless each and every one of you as you continue to walk in his kingdom day by day. There is absolutely nothing more important than that you cross the border, cross the border into the kingdom of God and live forever. Nothing more important than that.